final exam. So maybe when we learn about a simple com context. So without further ado, let us continue with that. Optimization comes from Latin words optimum or optimus, which means the ultimate ideal. In other words, it means the best. So scientifically speaking, optimization is a branch of science, the purpose of which is to find the best solution to a problem. So certainly there are many contexts that we can discuss depending on what perspective that we're using. So optimization is a method in operational research, the purpose of which is to find the best solution to a problem. So that is the definitions of optimization. And in the context of disasters, as you can see, the orange colors, the circle in orange colors represent areas impacted by disaster. Let's say there is a disaster hitting an area and we see the distributions of the areas impacted by such disaster. In the optimization, we will be able to look at the most optimum post to handle that disaster after the disaster happens. So this is what we call facility location problem. So for disaster post and so on and so forth, there are lots of things that can be improved by using optimization. One of the popular examples is the use of optimization in looking for the best vehicle routing or vehicle routes. So in terms of the cost perspective and so on and so forth, in vehicle routing problem, we look at the best routes. And these are examples of optimization in several fields. This is also relating to the optimization that we can do in Python. There are several fields of research that have applied optimization optimization, manufacturing, logistics, for example, FedEx streamlines costs by optimizing the best routing of packages through their shipping network. In manufacturing sector, the manufacturing sector also uses optimization. So we can see, so in general, we can say that optimization can solve problems by providing the best solution. So these are also other application. Optimization is a branch in operational research, the purpose of which is to provide the best solution to a problem. I hope I'm not speaking too fast. And this is the classifications of optimization. Today, as informed earlier, we will discuss about linear programming and MILP. So these are several scope of optimization. We will discuss in brief about LP and MILP. Without further ado, we can continue with the classifications in the optimization, which is linear programming and mixed integer linear programming. So for your overview, linear programming and mixed integer linear programming is how we convert our daily language or words into mathematical language. So it's just like when we learn how to talk. It's just like when we learn the Indonesian language, we start with learning the alphabets. So likewise, when we are going to create an optimization model, 
we will use mathematical or math notation. The most commonly used is a set. I believe you already know the definitions of a set. So we define a set and we surround a set by braces. And we also have element of here, as you can see on the screen. So this is also surrounded by, a, by brackets. And we also use sigma. Sigma is a mathematical notation for summing up or for sum. So you see the pattern. Let's say we have K. It's sigma, K can be, if, if we read the first math notation, so it's K, the K starts from one all the way through five. So we see the result is 15 for the first formula. And here we have a set. The set consists of one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, up all the way to five. And then all we need to do is to mention that the sum, we sum or we calculate or we add the elements of I. So that is also another alternative. And then Likewise, here we are using variables with a certain index. The concept is the same. We have a variable with the index of k, and then in this sigma, we calculate the sum of x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5 for this sigma operation. So this is a little information. The index can be many. The indexes can be many, so it doesn't matter. While we are able to state the index itself, all will be okay. And then we also have a symbol for all, as you can see under the element of. If we would like to read or if we would like to build an, a model in programming for optimization, let's say we have three models, the first line, second line, and third line. As I mentioned earlier, the first line can be make short. Let's say if it is too long or too lengthy, then we can use the sigma with k sum or the k element of one. So we can make it shorter. So let's say we have five lines, we can make it into one line. However, in this example, we have three lines and out of these three lines, we can make it short into one formula only. So that's the good thing about mathematics. So let's say if we have five lines or three lines, we just can make it short into one. So we have three sigma, x1k, x2k, and x3k. So you can see k is the index. K, meanwhile, the element is I. So the difference is the first index. So one, two, and three. So we can use this symbol. So J is defined as a set of one consisting of one, two, and three. Here we're going to use the sigma operation n times in line with the number in the J. Let's say we're going to operate the sigma and after that, after we finish that one, and we will operate the n equal to two, and then we do the operation for n equal to three. So this is a little information for us to understand the model of linear programming. So those are the steps. And now probably we can move on to the several concepts the basic concept of linear programming. Linear programming is the use of mathematical notation. So 
And as you can see, this is the general form of linear programming. The point is there are several basic components. The first one is a set. I will use example so that it will be clearer. The second one, we have parameter. Parameter is something that we know, data that we know, parameters that we know, and it will be in the form of number. In this case, the parameter is C and A. So in the model, C and A is an exact number. It's in a form of data that we know. We know the numbers of which. In addition to set and parameter, we also have other elements, which is decision variable. So we do not know the decision variable and we would like to know the decision variables. So in this general form, as you can see, we would like to know the value of X. We would like to know the, the decision variables. X is the decision variables. And after we have set parameter and decision variables, the fourth one is objective function. Later, when I provide examples, it can be seen clearer. And here, let's say we have a function. The point is, this will lead us to a point that we can find the best solution. And the best solution will depend on several aspects. Let's say maximization, minimization. There are many contexts in terms of the time, cost, and so on and so forth, the context is quite wide. And here we have constraint function. So the constraint function, so after subject two, so this is what we call constraint function. So you can imagine that this, we have logical, basic logic for that. For example, um, as I mentioned, there are five main components in linear programming. The first one is set, the second one is parameter. We know the data and the data are related and we have decision variables. This is what we're going to determine. We are going to determine the value of decision variables and this will strongly related to the problem itself. And we also have objective function in certain contexts. Meanwhile, constraint function describes the logics within a particular problem. So these are the five components in linear programming. And next, I would like to touch upon this one. This is one of the properties in linear programming. Let's say we would like to know the maximum value of F so F is the one curve marked by the blue line. So as you can see, we would like to know the maximum value of F. And it it is the same or it will be the same with the maximum value of minus F. As you can see the, the axis. However, we will multiply it with minus so that minus times minus is positive. So this is one of the basic properties of linear programming. We will be able to transform certain function for a particular purpose. And just now we have discussed about linear programming. So linear programming, the characteristic of linear programming is the decision variables. So upon looking at the variable, the decision variables, we have x1 to xn. So n is the decision variables. In the linear programming, all decision variables, x1 all the way to xn, have real values. It can be decimal values, 0 0.1, or it can be integer, mean 10, 10, and so on and so forth or it can be P and so on and so forth. So any number. 
So those are real value. So in re so in linear programming, we have um, real values. And the most important thing is that all the functions involved, such as decision function, I mean, objective function and constraint functions are real. So X is the variable for, for the functions. Everything is linear. That's why it is called linear programming. The difference between linear programming with mixed integer linear programming, I believe from the name itself, you will be able to know the difference. So the difference lie in the decision variables. If the decision variables involve a whole number such as one minus 100 or 1000, so those numbers are under the category of mixed integer because it's a combination of real number and integer. And there's also what's called binary. Binary consists of zero and one. Again, mixed integer linear programming basically is uh, quite similar with linear programming, but the difference lie in the decision variables. So here in the MILP, we have the decision variables consisting of continuous integer and binary. Meanwhile, for the rest, uh, meanwhile, for the number of the components, we also have five components. So this is some information. And now we would like to give you some example. And we will discuss about it step by step. So this one, this example, is taken or quoted from my book. So the book that we use in our university about the model of MILP. And here you can also read the question. So let's say there's a young couple consisting of Eve and Steven. So they want to share jobs. They have four work that they have to do, marketing, cooking, dishwashing, and laundry. They would like to share the task among, among them. And each person has two tasks. Let's say if is doing cooking and mark uh, dishwashing, or probably Steven is doing marketing and laundry. And here, each person has to have two tasks and they want that whatever the task that they would like to do, they would like to have the most minimum time to do their task. So that's the point. They would like to share their task, but at the same time, they would like to reduce the time that they do or they need to do to do or to conduct the task. So again, we look at the basic components in MILP. So we have five components, set parameters, decision variables, objective function and constraint function. And here we would like to give you the example about the step on how we can build a simple model like this. And if we look at problems, the first thing that we need to see is what we would like to determine. In this mathematical question, what do they would like to determine? Here, if and Stephen would like to divide their main household chores, they would like to know who will do what. There are two objects here, who and what. So who will do what task? So these will be our decision variables. Let's say the variable, the decision variables is X, I, J. So X, I, J represent whether a person I is a sign. So we would like to know who does what. So that will be 
a basis for our decision. So we have two objects, the person and the task, right? And those will be our set. So we have a set of person and we have a set of task. So the set is in a form of mathematical uh, symbols, which is numbers. And let's say if is doing the household chores, let's say Steven is doing marketing, but it should be consistent. Again, the object consists of two things, person and task. And then after that, we should be able to know what kind of data that we have that are relevant to this. So our goal is to achieve minimum time. So there needs to be time variable. The example is very simple here. So we can see the information on the time required for each person to complete a certain task. TIJ is a parameter. It represents time needed by person I to accomplish task J. So after knowing the three components, we know the variables, we know the sets, we know the parameters and decision variables, and we will then build the objective function and constraint function. As mentioned, the objective function will represent the best solution in a particular context. If we look at this, the best one in their version is the achievement of the minimum amount of time to conduct their task. So this is going to be a minimum calculation of each person to conduct their task. So the point is the function the objective function is to look at the minimum time. So it is a part of the criteria towards the achievement of the best solution. Whether it is based on time, based on cost. So those are the references for our objective functions. Meanwhile, the constraint function represent the logics that are available if we read a, a particular problem. In this problem, if and Stephen should have two tasks for each person, no more than two and no less than two. So this represents that. Let's say one represent if and number two represent Stephen. The first line, if we read the first line, the task done by Steve should be no more and no less than two because xij has a value of one if yes and zero if no. Let's say if is doing laundry, which means that x uh, one is one. So these two formula represent the logic that each person should conduct or should do two tasks, no more and no less than two tasks. So there are four tasks, right? One person should only do two tasks. It means that one person should do two tasks, no more than two. Let's say if if is cooking, then Stephen should not do the cooking task. Otherwise, all the tasks will not be able to be completed in time. So there should no be overlapping in the conduct of the task itself. The third constraint, um, constraint function, let's say one is marketing. Marketing should be done by one person. Let's say X, X1 and X21 is zero because Stephen is not doing cooking. So the one who does the cooking should be one person. So each person only does, I mean, each particular task is done by one person. So this is a type of what can we do to build a model. So again, we have five components. We should be able to know the decision variables 
and we should be able to know what we would like to achieve and what we would like to determine in the modeling itself. And second of all, we should be able to know the objects in the modeling. Let's say here, again, I repeat, the object is persons and task. Who will do what? Automatically, the object is the person and the task. Third of all, we have parameters, data that are related to our problem. The problem is we would like to determine the division of tasks so that we can have minimum time to complete the data. And we would like to know that the minimum time. So those are three components in addition to the objective function that represent the best perspective in a particular context. In this case, the context is the minimum time, the minimum total amount of time that we're going to look at. And we should be able to know the constraint function where we know the constraint function is the, the logics surrounding the situation. In this case, one particular task should be done by one person. So in the mathematical, mathematical model, you'll be able to see MILP for the couple, for the couple problem. So they can use that model to be able to find the best solution for their task. So we have learned about several notation. So we can make a lengthy notation into shorter notation. I do hope that there is no problem with this. The point is here, our purpose is to minimize the total amount of time that we need to do our task. And each person, in this case, should be able to do two tasks only. So for all person in the set itself, so each of them should do two jobs, no more than two tasks. So for all J for all set of tasks. Any part of the task, such particular task should be conducted by one person. So if we put it in a mathematical model, this is the formula. So this is an example for the introduction. Again, we have discussed about the optimization modeling and we adjust it and we use Python to do the optimization. Our purpose is to show to you how we can build a model of optimization, in this case, linear programming, to solve a particular problem. Just like yesterday with the ABM model presented by Stefan Ngo, and here we are building an optimization model. And in this slide, is me, maybe you can update me um, about my time. You can give me a sense of time until 11.30. Oh, I still have one hour. All right, ladies and gentlemen, maybe we can take a short break. Let's take a short break for like five minutes up until 10.35. Let's have a break. So the point that I have delivered earlier is that the main components, when we build an optimization model, we have a set parameters, variables, decision variables, objective function and constraint function. During the break, I would like to invite you to at least look at the formula and think of the formula of optimization to solve this problem. After the break, we can discuss further. This is a simple 
mathematical problem. I do hope that all of you are able to catch up and are able to follow this explanation. And let's have a break for like five minutes. And after a five minutes break, let's continue with discussing the result of the problem solving. And after that, we will continue with a case study. So, yeah. So maybe you can take some time so everyone can be active in the discussion. Again, I would like to thank all of you. And if you have any question, you can send us a message in the chat box and we will try to answer your question in the chat box. Thank you so much, Audi, for your explanation. We will have a short break until 11.35 Jakarta time. Let's take a break for five minutes and we will have, and we will be back at 10.35 Jakarta time. Thank you. It is a representation of all of each logic that is exists. And now we will talk together about that and the expectation is maybe all of you have started to run the process and in this problem it is about the company let's say the name of the company is general wheels company so they are considering a six large capital investment each of the opportunities can only be requests once so if you read here the problem is actually, we need to find the problem first, what needs to be solved. And then they want to find out where is the investment based on the capital that they have, which is $100 million. So based on this amount of money, they want where they want to invest so they can maximize the estimated profit. And that's become our aim. So if you can see here, we have mentioned to you that what's become the decisions, the reference is that the company needs to invest whether to first, second, third, and to whichever that they want to invest. That is the baseline of their decisions. And the variable of their decisions is the one that I told you earlier, where the company will invest to the six opportunities that is available. And it's become the variable of our decisions. And based on the problems that we have discussed earlier, here actually, the I can see only one object, but then the math mo models could be varied. It means that for one problem, me, you, the model might be different to one more time because of the people's logic are different. And if we still have a representative, then the problem are still okay. So please don't be worried about that. We can explore as free as we want. And as long as this represent the problems that we are trying to discuss and the decisions for eyeball, whether does investment opportunity I should be taken and it is the same, the it is uh, in zero and one. If the company invests, let's say that in three, then the I is three. If no, then it will be zero. So that is the investment opportunity that we need to know. We also talk about the project and the investment opportunity become the object of this mapping. And then the last one is that the supported variable and as we know that they have problems in the budget it means that we find out about the data on the budget and one more time the problem are still simple here and it is already provided it is written that the capital required 
by the company to do investment to create an investment in the investment opportunity one two three and so on that's the first one because they have a limitations in budget and the second one is that they want to maximize their estimated profit so that's why we have to find out the data related to the estimated profit and one more time because this is a very simple example and it has been given on the problem so we already know what is the estimated profit so this is become our parameter our support the supporting data and trying to solve the current problems so this is the decisions variable this is the sets and this is the parameter and with these three components we are trying to build the functions and our aim where it represent the best versions of the solution solutions and one more time like what I told you earlier is the minimum times required and the best solutions in the context of estimated profit, they want to make sure that they created a profit. Automatically, what's become the functions is how to maximize the profit. Here, we can see that estimated profit, we calculate all of the estimated profit that we get. And then after that, we invest the strategy. That is what we're trying to maximize. And then the functions of the problems, the logic, when we face in the uh, problems, the logic available here, of course, is related to budget. So, let's say that it is a hundred million dollar and that's become our problems when we want to do the investment the capital that we need to give it's less than a hundred so this is the functions of a problem with the estimated budget and next is that about the logic on the decisions making of investment opportunity it is mentioned here that one and two are mutually exclusive and so are three and four what does it mean meaning is that one two are mutually exclusive when the company decided to invest to one and then not with two and so on and so forth that's what we call mutual exclusive and so are three and four so the point is that the investment opportunities if it is one taken then the rest is not if they take four and then three not anymore so so on and so forth so we will see it like here so z one two three if z one is one or z one opportunity is taken it means that the result will be zero when Z4 is one, or for example, that the company take the opportunity four, then the opportunity three is not taken. So that is the logic. And the last one here, it is stated that neither three or four cannot be undertaken unless one of the first two opportunities is undertaken. So we try to talk about this case per case. For example, like one and two is not taken by the company. It means that from this statement, when one and two is not both not taken, it means that the opportunity three and four also cannot be taken. So minimum one from all of this should be taken taken between one or two so that there will be a possibility to take either three or four or four if we take three it means that between one and two needs to be taken and it is the same when we take opportunity four it means that one of the opportunity from one to three needs to be taken in the last two to allow Z3 and Z1, it means that Z2 plus need to be one. If both of this is zero or not taken, it means that Z3 must be zero because this is 
select the uh, star additions, that is automatically happen. If Z4 and Z1 is zero, then Z4 is zero. It means that the, uh, the company did not take the opportunity four. So the point is like that, the, the opportunity three and four can be taken and it is possible to become one if between Z1 and Z2 have a value one. So that is the example. So the point one more time is that here we would like to tell you that all of those five main components in uh, we have the uh, fun functions and aim, it will always be taken when we want to model a problems. And especially with the uh, programming, those are five component in MILP. And one more time, after we knew several math notations, we can shorten the time by creating these notations, ladies and gentlemen. So that's why now we can continue to more on LP and MILP terminologies that is being used. So we're talking about solutions and solutions. I also do understand that maybe all of you understand about this. But then here, maybe one more time, I would like to say the definitions of the mathematics means that the solutions in the math definitions is a combination of any value for all of decisions variable involved. So the point is like this, we, for the previous example, let's say that we have six variable total from Z1 to Z6. And what we call solutions is that a combination of any value from Z1 to Z6 with a certain um, amount of variables. So we're not going into right or wrong. We just do it randomly. How much, how many is Z1 and Z2 up until Z6? And that is become a solution. So combinations of any value for all decisions variable involved. So let's say that our first solutions all zero. So Z1 and Z6 is zero, meaning that all of the opportunities is not been taken by the companies. So nothing is taken. Or the second one or second solutions by taking all of the opportunities, it means that all of the investment opportunities it means one. So this is the example for both the solutions. It means that there will be more possibilities or it can be mixed. It, maybe there is zero or one, but then it is just wants to highlight that this is a solution. This is combinations from all the any value of all decisions variable. And then from this, we can classify it. So before that, we want to in, we want to investigate. We have two solutions. The first one is all zero and the second one is all one. For example, like everything, whether everything is not taken or everything's taken. So we, after that, we want to talk about the right solutions and wrong solutions. And now we can see that the limitations is in hundred million dollars. If they want to take all of the opportunity, then the summations is they need $205 million. So automatically the second solutions is actually wrong. Is This is an invisible solutions. Invisible solutions is the solutions which cannot satisfy all of the constraint and not based on our target. That is invisible solutions. So there is one criteria that has been violated by the solutions. Meanwhile, another classification is feasible solutions where a solutions can match to all of the constraints. So one more time, the solutions cannot see the right or wrong. It's just an alternative for many possibilities that we can take. And then from the solutions, we can develop more. We have another two classifications, which is visible solutions and invisible solutions, like what I have explained earlier. And let's say that we said, okay, this is match and this is not. Of course, we are taking the visible solutions. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a classification of solutions. And then after that, this is actually the 
the green one is one of the solutions from all of the solutions of other feasible solutions. We don't know yet whether there might be another solutions apart from this one. And then after that, when we try to gather all of the feasible solutions apart from zero, 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 we want to look more and for another solutions that are feasible. When we already gather all of the feasible solutions that has existed, and then after that, we can combine it and then we can create a set. And then in mathematics, we call it feasible set or feasible region. It means that a feasible set for us, meaning that a set with which contains all feasible solutions or all the, of the solutions that is fulfilling all of the criteria. And then after we set a feasible solutions, and then after that, from all of the candidate of feasible solutions on the feasible set, and that we will be candidate, we will take one optimal solution solutions, call it optimal solutions or the best feasible solutions. By definitions, optimal solutions is the best feasible solutions in many contexts, the best feasible solutions in a feasible set. So in the context of maximizations here, when we are trying to utilize or try to apply this, it means that the profit will be bigger if we apply this to another solutions. So that's what we call the optimal solutions. That one is the best when we apply it, and then the result will be better than others. So maybe in the context of matchmaking, maybe you are way more expert than this. When we are trying to look for a partner, you have a criteria, maybe a handsome or pretty or beautiful or patience or able to cook or rich, have lots of money. You have those criteria, right? You can mention the criteria and that's what's become your problem. So all of your criteria by looking for a partner, for a life partner, it's become your uh, problems. And then when you met them, when you meet them, the your partner of your life, we will try to look at our criteria. Let's say that, oh, okay, so we're looking for another feasible based on our criteria that we wanted. So that is our feasible partner, for example. And let's say another thing, let's say that we look for another a person, we go around the world and then we met a lot of people. And then after that, we try to look for other people possible partner that is suitable and in line with our criteria. If uh, there are people who seems fit to us, it means that we can put it to our uh, visible solutions. So the point is that we try to go around the world, we try to look for other feasible partner. And then after that, every, if is everything's are compiled, we, we collect them all together, we compile them all together and we call it a feasible set. And from those feasible set, we need to take a decisions whether from many people exist, who is the best one, the best person to be my partner after we, combine all of those people, we need to take one as the best, whether you want to take the, another perspective from your criteria, whether you look, whether you choose them because they're pretty or others. And maybe Patomi is the one who can uh, talk about this because he's already found his, uh, his partner, but then this optimal partners is become a solutions. Maybe that's just the analogy. And then one more time, the point is that we want to find the optimal solutions, the optimal solutions for a, an existed problem. And maybe that's all the terminologies that is mostly used in optimizations and really in the relations with partner. There's one thing that I might forgot in the context of optimizations, 
not in the context of partner. In the context of optimizations, the optimal solutions can be many. So not only one, actually. So the point is all of the optimal solutions, it doesn't have to be one. It could be resulting of many best solutions. And then let's go to the next terminologies. After we talk about solutions, and then after that, we try to classify the problems. We've talked about the varieties of solutions that are visible solutions and all of the visible solutions when we compile it for a set and then we call it a visible set after that from all of the elements on the visible set after that we will determine which one is the optimal solutions and then after that we will talk about the classifications of the problem so a problem is said to be feasible if the visible set exists so there is a correct solu of solutions. Let's say that there is a one feasible solution. It means that the problem is to be feasible. And the second still is said to be in full. It means like we cannot found any feasible set. So uh, from the analogy, if we want to try to find a partner, we cannot found any. It means that we're single from time to time. But then the point is that an invisible problem, it means that we cannot found any feasible set. Or in another word, there's no feasible set or it's just a zero set. And then the last one is that a problem is said to, to be unbounded if there's any no constraint limit to the better solutions. Maybe here you can understand a little bit about the maximizations of Z as X1 plus X2, but then the limitations is subject to this. We want to find a maximum value, but then there's no uh, limitations of course we try to find a better solutions from the solutions that we have now so there's no limitations let's say that okay we determine that x1 is 100 million and then x2 is 100 billion and then we always try to find another be or better solutions so there's no end to that and then the terms for that is unbounded because there is no constraint limits for the better solutions So we call it unbounded, and I think all of you can understand that. But then this is just some of, some of the terminologies related to the optimizations. And we have talked about the uh, basic component in MILP. And then we also uh, displayed with the very simple step of MILP. And then after that, we also talk about the classifications that is appeared mostly about the solutions or about the problem itself. And maybe some of you here already start the Q&A. And from Samsida Rosi, could you please help to explain more detail in the difference of ILP and MILP? if the set of conditions that all decisions variables okay. have integer value then it is ilp okay okay so there is a very interesting questions from samsida rosi uh, from sir or ma'am so it is to clarify the difference between integer linear program and mixed integer linear programming. This is a very good question. What I've not talked about this is about there is a classification that is not discussed here. 
And as we know that we're talking about only about LP and MILP, right? Actually, there are another form of that. At the beginning, I've shown you the classifications, not only LP and MILP, but then actually we have something else called peer integer or ILP. So the peer integers is true. It is when all of the variables have the integer type. The previous one is linear. It means that the, var the, the uh, variables are real, but then integer linear programming, it means like all of the variables have the integer type. So there's no fractions. That's why we call it a pure integer. And then mix, like what we discussed today, it means that it's a mix when there is an integer and when there is a real. So yes, thank you very much for the questions. I do really hope that it can answer your questions. And the second one. And what if the decisions variable are integer while the objective functions has real value? Okay, the second one, uh, Mr. Samsudo Rosi, I would like to tell you that the categorizations of MLP and MILP is not seeing where is the variable, but then to see as a whole. So we have the aim functions and also the problem functions. So. Mr. or Madam Samshidorozi, when the model is involving all of the linear variables, then we call it a linear programming. So it doesn't matter if it is only in the, the objective or the problems, we want to see the whole problem. If there's any one integer or other uh, real, we call it MILP. So one more time, it's not only seeing whether it's it is uh, exists on the objective or the problems, but we need to see this as a whole. And I do really hope that it can answer your questions. If there are still things that are unclear, you can uh, do a follow-up questions. If it's enough for now, okay, we will continue. And thank you very much for the questions, ma'am or sir. And that's more or less of my answer. And now let's go to, okay. So we have another questions here. Okay, bener. Yeah, terima kasih Ibu. Yeah, thank you very much Ibu Reginawati. Yes, in the simple statistic, there are independent and dependent variables. So the question is in a simple statistic for experimental research, we recognize that there are independent and dependent variable. Is this dependent variable the parameter that you described earlier? Yes, so dependent variables is actually the parameter. So the free variable is the one that we want to determine which is the decisions variable in optimization. So yes, it's true, Ibu Reginawati. In the statistic language, the dependent variable is the parameter that are fixed and it is not. So the free variables, it's on the decisions variable. And I do really hope that it can answer your questions. Thank you very much, Ibu. And let's go to the next questions. If you still have any questions, maybe after this, we will talk about case study, a model that we will try to discuss, or we will try to uh, talk in Python. And we will learn more about the general terminologies and we talk about any cases in an article and try to solve this invited environment. Okay. Okay, so if you don't have any questions for now, let's try to continue. If you have any further questions, please ask on the chat box. So for now, ladies and gentlemen, we will try to take a one of the cases, case study that we published last year on early of COVID-19. So I would like to explain a little bit about the problems 
What is actually the problem that is discussed here? This is an article talking about the design of the optimum sustainable food supply network. So it's not only designed only during the COVID, but we can also use this for any certain conditions, meaning that we want to create an optimum sustainable food supply network by proposing through food hub, regional food hubs. So we try to fulfill the food resilient by implying the regional food hubs. That is the main problem. And then what most important is that it needs to be sustained. It's not only it can be applied during the normal conditions or COVID-19, it can be sustained. So it's not just for, for a temporary. This is our, the things that we want to um, create. And talking about COVID, actually we want to talk about three scenario. The scenarios is based on the disruptions of food access. So at the beginning of last year, when COVID just, uh, just spread, there's a lot of issues of food access that are disturbed. And early of that year, due to that issues, we want to analyze the impact that if the food access is this strong the disruptions of food access that's the most impacted and most severe and the second scenario is disruptions of the food access in the medium level and the third one so on and so forth so the first and second scenario is the justifications so that the food access can be maintained well even during the pandemic So here is talking about the first and the second scenario. So it's just the justifications. These are the things that will happen if the food access cannot maintain well. The impact is like this and this, and then it is has explained in this article. And due to the time limit, we still have another 30 minutes. What we will discuss is scenario three. So the scenario three is a food access when it's disturbed. Even though during the COVID, we need to maintain a good and well food access. And for the case study, it is focusing on West Java, Indonesia with three food commodities, which is rice, chicken act and vegetables. And we are trying to study here in West Java with three food commodities, rice, chicken, eggs, and vegetables. And one more time, we want to determine the food supply network through the development of a regional food hub. That is the basic ideas of this study. Let's continue. Okay, in West Java itself, we have 27 of residency or sub district. So the problem is that from uh, this uh, residency, we wanted to know the uh, food supply by developing the regional food hub. So the first one is that we want to determine from 27 of this residency, we want to uh, determine the red dot is the RFH locations where is it located and where is the RFA need able to support of the community toward food, chicken, eggs, and vegetables. So the problem is that we want to set out or determine where and how many the RFA's locations and how is the food supply network. We need to do the mapping of the production central, whatever is that, that will provide a supply. 
uh, tentang produksi mana aja nih. Nah itu akan kita juga coba jawab di uh, artikel ini gitu ya. This is something that we're going to answer in this article and in addition to mapping the production center, we will also look at which regional food hub that can fulfill the demand. Katakanlah service area seperti itu. Jadi itu let's say that is a service area. That's the basic ideas. So the output is leading to that way to support food security by developing regional food hub or RFH. So after we know the overview of the problems, and again we will try to create a model to establish a model that can address the issue. Because this is already 11.12, so without further ado, I will continue with this. So we determine the RFH location and also the food network and also the surface area. So XJ represent, so there are 27 municipalities and regencies or districts, let's say, the regional food hub will be established in a particular uh, district or, or regency. And then about the sub-network, we have P and Y. So we have four objects here, the basis of consumers, consumer-based regions, and J is a set of optional RFH location. So we collect the RFA location first. And the third part of the set is the set of producer areas. And the fourth one is a set of commodities, the eggs, rice, and so on, which is part of our discussion. Why, let's say, why represent the food network and why CKJ? represents ratio of commodity C produce in region K. So as you can read, that is the radio of community that C produce in region K sent to the RFH region J. So we will discuss about the model and we here have um, double WCGA. So this is the one that maps, let's say in Bandung, we have a certain particular demand for rice and a certain percentage is distributed to Karawang region, let's say, and a particular sum is distributed to Depok. So it's ratio of demand of community C in region, I fulfilled by RFH at region J. So this is something to do with the consumer basis. Again, that is used to calculate the capacity. We would like to calculate the capacity of RFH at each location. This is what we would like to know throughout this model. And here, there are several parameters that we need by involving and by fulfilling the demand. And certainly, we need to estimate the demand of each community or each area or in the consumer base. And we should be able to map the capacity or the production rate of each area and here we also look at the selling price of commodity commodity c in consumer base i and in line with the information that we have on the market right so we'll focus on the supply the price of which is high let's say the stock is not sufficient and there's also another parameter which is the distribution cost between region j and i and we have q for food handling cost and h here is for 
uh, RFH development codes. So with these components, we are building the objective function and constraint function. So here we have what's called multi-objectives. Earlier, we discussed about one objective. In this model, we can prove that to define uh, we, we are able to define several objectives, not only one objectives, but more than one objectives. And in this case, to achieve food security in West Java, we need to optimize the CY. So as long as we the capacity, we will provide the supply. However, if we have uh, less adequate supply we will think of the price that is the reason why we put the parameter pci in this case in addition to that second of all in addition to the first priority to optimize the fulfillment of the food needs in west java province we also need to ensure that we can reduce the price right consist of distribution costs and also RFH development cost. And the third one is food handling cost. So we would like to optimize the fulfillment of demand. However, at the same time, we need to op we need to minimize total operational costs through this model. I think I still have some time. So the point is, um, there are actually several things that I need to um, share with you, so I will make it fast. So this is the constraint model. We have the capacity calculation. We will calculate the RFH, RFH optimum capacity. And the second constraint represent food network or the food production the distribution will be in line with the capacity. So let's say in Karawang, the production is 200 tons and the distribution, the maximum distribution should be 200 tons in line with the capacity. And, and here we can see the ratio. So that is the basic logic. So the constraint function provide the basic logics. So in addition to that, we also have uh, equality the we will supply in line with the demand and the supply that's the supply and demand elements so we will adjust the flow in and flow out so the flow in will be related to the flow out and we also have constraint four and constraint five constraint four guarantee the food distribution so let there, let's say there is no regional food hub in karawang then there is no uh, food supplied to the Karawang area then to the consumers. So the point is, if an RFH is built out there, then the food will be supplied to that area. Likewise, if there is an RFH built in an area, then we will be able to supply the food in the newly built area. RFH in line with where or the location in which they are built. So, what to do? So, we can go to Python right now. I would like to ask uh, for assistance of the committee to, sh to help me to do the share screen, to share screen the Python. So, just like yesterday. We will try to do it online, so you can install it first. Um, I mean, you don't need to install it. It's already there in the repository. So we will discuss purely on the optimization in Python. Actually, I don't know yeah, if it's already shared, if the link is already shared earlier during the session. And now let's go to that link in Python. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe you are able to join me on this page. If you are able to join me on that page, please give me a notification.
masih loading ya Bapak Ibu atau is it still loading? Oke, okay. oke okay, ada yang sudah. Oke, okay, berarti Oke, okay. somebody told me that they're already there. So once you are there, you can open this link and dot ip y and b okay that's the link oh wait a moment oh it's already open that's okay then it's already open okay this is the interface of page this is what we're going to use to practice the functions in python like yesterday geo my colleague has informed you the basic information in python so here in optimization there are actually in python there are several packages let's say one of which is the open source and ip there's also cplex but the cplex one is commercial for students maybe you can register freely the one that is readily uh, open for public access is N NIP. So this provides the processing for numbers from the Excel format and letter. We will also use uh, set files at the end of the presentation. All right. The point is, after we ensure that the model package is installed. So we will we will try to see the model. So this is a multi-objective function. The first set is when we would like. Okay, we can run the first one. You can run the first one. And after you run the first one, after all the package has been run. First of all, what we would like to do is that we would like to create an object in Python. You can name it model one or any any name. So this is the syntax that we use to create an optimization in Python for MILP. By this way, we assign or we create a variable for model one, and that is optimization object in python so it's still blank so we will put it with a uh, variable so but first of all we need to define the object so let's press enter um, and then after that we can run the first one so it's a set right let's say in west java there are 27 municipalities or regencies so the consumer based regions so the i is 27 and j is set of optional rfh location is also 27 and k is the producer areas is also 27 in line the number of uh, cities or municipalities or district or regencies okay so we will input 27 regencies and c is commodities so we have three commodities rice chicken eggs and vegetables and we will input that to the variables in Python. And after that, after we declare the set, we will declare the parameter. So in the initial page, there are several info on how to import data from Excel. So we tried once to input data from Bapeda or BPS. So we first of all collect the available data in excel format and after that we import that data yesterday geo had provided information on how to uh, import the data the function here is pd right pd is a short for module pandas pandas, mon pandas module which is needed to interact with excel python in this case to import Excel data into Python environment, we can type pd.read underscores Excel. And here, the input starts from Excel files. 
And you can see here demand, distribution cost, selling price, and so on and so forth. So again, this is the input and this is the header because the Python start from zero. So it's a header. So if you would like to download, let's say you just need to click the demand. You need you click on that and you click on download. Oh, it seems that we still have an error. I don't know why. Let me try once again. Let me try one more time and open it again. Nah, ini yang sudah okay. Jadi, so this is the one that has been okay, right? You can download that. And after you download that, you can see the format here. The line consists of the commodities and there are 27, there are columns for cities or municipalities or districts. And due to the time constraint, you can see it for yourself. Again, I would like to ask uh, a question to the committee. How many minutes do we still have left? Three minutes? Okay. Okay, then for the definitions of parameter, we define all the parameters. We import it. D represent demand. P represent price. And then... B is a production cost, Q is handling cost, H is the RFH development cost parameter. So we run it after we, we have the set and also the parameter and we would like to define the, param, para, the variable. The variable consists of X, P, Y, and W. Um, the naming is free for you, but the one that we need to do is just we need to be consistent. So X is the variable for the decision. As mentioned earlier, XJ, and previously it was XJ, right? And we can create a list with uh, with braces. So model one dot add underscore far is to add a model. Let's say the name is Audi dot model. So the function should be in line with the one that you have declared earlier at first. So add far mean add variable. And here the breast, the brackets, it's it is surrounded by brackets. So the variable is binary here, and then here we have xj. We have 27, right? So we use capital J. So we try to create a list of x variable so it start from x1 and so on and so forth and in python the first index is zero so we will use the index zero all the way to 26 right and then after we input that we have variables parameters and set last but not least we need to input the objective, maybe I can end my explanation due to time constraint and we can continue with the Q&A session. So if you have any question, so I will try to answer your question during the Q&A session. So thank you so much for your kind attention. All right, thank you so much, Kaudi, for your very informative and insightful presentation about solving a real life problem. So you can also uh, use this optimization in the selection of a girlfriend or boyfriend or a couple, right? So now we will move on with the presentation from Dr. Dia Hairani from Universitas Pajajaran. However, let's have a break for five minutes until 11.35 Jakarta time. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a question. It's a quiz based on the presentation presented by Audi. You can do the polling. You can answer the polling. Do you think we can use the optimization to find our love of life. Curhat, ya. 
<laughs> ya maksudnya ibu yang menyampaikan ini saya masih kurang ten belum praktek tapi kalau mengutip dari uh, pemaparan Pak Stefan kemarin there is no for Mr. Stefan yesterday hmm. there is no perfect model for the real life problem Oke, ternyata jawabannya uh, 78%. So, 78% said yes, and 22% said no. So, Paudi, do you have any comment for the result of this polling? Or Ibu Dia, maybe? Or Patomi? Belum berhasil. I never implied the robust... Uh, optimizations to the theorem but then Audi can analog analog this yeah betul banyak yang pasti yep